a lot of people have asked us what's the benefit of the splits over the standard 45 DCOE. If you look at standard Weber manifold, you will see that the tract from the actual choke goes in, round a bend, down before it straightens out. On a split, it is perfectly straight. So the actual induction charge goes straight in to the port. This is good for around about three or four horsepower on a race motor. A lot of people say, is it worth the extra? Obviously, when you get down to the last three or four horsepower, that is when it costs a lot of money to find that last few horsepower. But on saying that, we have sold three sets of these in the last few months to people who want the period look on road cars. Here's the carburetor that we machined on the last section. Here's a new one that we've stripped out. So we're just gonna change the chokes first. So we'll pop the new choke in. Make sure you get the, the little dimple in the right place. That's got to locate in the bottom. So we'll drop that one in. Twist him round to find the little dimple just there. Pop the screw in. We'll now put the auxiliary vent in. Make sure you get this the right way round. You'll see it's got a radius in the top. That goes towards the outside of the carburetor. And then the little dimple is just there. So again, drop him in. Locate the dimple. So, pop the screw in. We will normally lock wire those in place. We don't use the tab washers because tab washers can come undone. We lock wire them in, that cannot come undone. That's what we use, Goodrich stainless steel locking wire. There we go, so that's assembled now. Just put the ramp pipe back in, pop the two. I'm not going to really tighten anything up here. I'm just going to show you quickly how everything goes back together. Next job is we put the little rose jointed arms on. So these fit directly onto the ball socket. Pop those on. Okay, here's the rose joint. We've got a special thick hardened washer that sits against the rose joint. This now goes through just there. With the mice plate on the back. So we just spin him up loosely. We only use nylocks here. This is the one that we've machined in half. So, rose joint with the washer, my sab, carburetor, hold him in place. Make sure you get the bolt going through the MISA plate and then through the manifold. Pop the nut on loosely. There we go. So there the carburetor's in place. We've put the rose jointed arms on both carburetors there. So what we'll do now is we will just pop the little lever arms on. So these are quite an easy fit. You'll see the hexagon drops into the slot like so. Nut goes on along with the washer. Again, not going to lock them up. Okay, now you've got to put the pivot bar in. The pivot bar will need two stop bushes. Pivot bar, 
and this is the lever arm for the throttle cable. You'll notice we've already pre-assembled the central spindle where the cable goes through. Okay. To start it through, you now need this one on this way round, like so. Next one on, just there. Now as you're pushing it through the second row's joint, make sure you slip both of these along and then locate it through the next row's joint. There we go. Okay, so now you put one bush so, pull the shaft to the end, little Allen key, another bush, to the end, Allen key again, just lock him up. That locks the shaft between the two row's joints. Now what we're going to do is position the actual lever arm, so you need to keep, if you see the row's joint shaft here, that wants to be kept perfectly parallel to the actual induction length. So just there, and then pop the Allen key in. So that one's now in position. You've put the lock on the, that end. You now put this one on this end. And again, make sure that the rose joint shaft is parallel to the induction. Tighten that one up. There you go. There's your linkage in place. This one, obviously, will work in conjunction with this plate that fits on so and then the linkage comes up from there. Okay, we've just got to do a slight modification internally on each carburetor. So we'll just pop the float bowl lid off. And what you'll see now is there are two brass slot-headed screws here. One there, one there. That's for this choke tube. And the same here, but you'll notice one's removed. Now, we take that one out from there and what you'll see underneath there is a sliding jet. You need to plug that. So we actually take the screw out and we put an Allen screw in there and lock the jet down into the base of the carburetor. If you don't do that, you'll end up with the pump jet flooding fuel out of this side of the carburetor. Okay, here's the petrol pipe. We're just going to pop this on now. You'll notice that we've actually put a T-piece on this side so we can run fuel in this way, into one carb, along and into the other carb. If you're buying two single carburetors, you'll only get this piece on both carburetors. I'm not going to tighten these up, just going to put them on loosely for you. Another one on this side. Make sure you put the fibre washers on, otherwise you'll end up with fuel everywhere. Okay, we'll just take the carburetors out of the vise now, and then we'll show you how to solder the jets up. All we've got is a little electrical soldering iron. Drop a little tiny bit of solder on there. Look, you'll see it smoking, so we know we've got the right temperature. Make sure you hold the jet in a pair of needle pliers, otherwise it'll burn your fingers. Pop him onto the end of the soldering iron. Wait for the heat to disperse through the jet. 10, 15 seconds. If you just get the uh, solder then and just literally pop it through the end of the eye and touch the brass you'll see once it gets to the right temperature the solder will run straight in there you go look straight in you will see then that the jet is actually solid okay so that's the two main jets complete. Same thing for the air jets. Pop them in the pliers. Just literally warm them up. Just give it a couple of seconds. There we go. Give it a try now. Hey ho. There we go. Straight away. Lift him off. Quick cool down. Turn him over. Just check it's gone through. You can see there, beautiful solder line. We'll now just repeat the process for the other jets. 
there we go, down we go, through the centre. Wait for it to warm up, there we go. Okay, jets are all soldered up now, so we're actually going to re-jet the carburetors. We're going to put in the jets into the side which is actually going to be using the fuel. So this side and this side. So we'll start with emulsion tube. On this it's going to be a race car, so we're going to go for F2 emulsion tubes. We're going to pop the main jet into the bottom, which is going to be a 190. Pop that one in there, okay. We're going to use an air jet there, which is a 180. There we go. Now pop the cap on and that one's good to go. So that one goes in this side because this is the side we're using. Into there, spin him in with the screwdriver. And that one's in. Okay, same for there. This one's having a 50 pump jet, numbers on the base of the jet. Don't forget these, you must put the little aluminium ceiling washer on, just there. There's a little flat on it that locates in the bottom of the carburetor. So down he goes, twist him around so he locates, that one's in. Little cap with the o-ring on, pop the cap on, spin him on. So we've just now got the idle jet, this one is a 55 F9. In there. And the same again, two there, two there, two there, and a blanked off pump jet in there, blanked off pump jet in there, and another 50 pump jet in there, and that would complete it. What we've got then is the little covers to go over the jets. And that's the job complete. The one carburetor that you don't have to cut up, so you could actually reuse that as a single 45 Weber. This one has to be cut up to get the linkage in and get the straight shot. So you can buy the linkage kits, the manifolds, or the complete assembly. It's all on the website, whichever you want to do.